man. What up, everybody? Back in Corin's world, here with my good friend Adam G. What up, man? NYC. What's up, bro? Adam G. NYC. So, um, I haven't. I mean, feel like I've spoken to you in a little bit, but I feel yeah. like you know we're good enough boys that just you know you're in your own lane, I'm in my own lane, and then just you know if I have a question or an issue or just want yeah, to talk, or, bro. I mean, I don't want to like. I know I don't know if you do your intro thing. I've never done this before, but mm -hmm. um, dude, I mean, like I, I tell everybody, bro, you're. I consider you one of my like. You're my best friend. Like, and we haven't like seen each other in a minute, but um, it's it's it literally been a while since we physically seen each other. But I know we always like keep in touch. Mm -hmm. You're doing your thing. You're traveling like crazy. You got your work thing. You got Nick's. You got you know, got Molly. Like you, you got a beautiful family and all these things and. Um, but it's nice to like actually like you hit me up and like we're down to do this with me. So it's it's like I'm excited about this. I'm a little nervous to be honest because I've like I said I've never done this before. Yeah. But it's uh, I really appreciate you like thinking of me to do it because I know like you know you've got your thing going on and like I'm sure like even with everything what you got going on, you met so many people that like want to do this and like mm -hmm. do the whole damn thing and so I appreciate you like that you're down to do this with me. So yeah, well, man, I'll, I'm in for it. Let's go. So. I mean, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on is just because, like, I've always just taken an interest in whatever you've taken an interest in. So whether it's, like, sneakers or music or you just have a very creative mind. And I've always been drawn to you just by, like, seeing what you're interested in, whether it's fashion or something. Like, you're wearing, like, an awesome jacket. And I'll just be like, damn, like, where's that from? Or, like, what do you do? You know, and, like, you'll know of, like, yeah. designers and this and that. So when I started this channel, I, like... I, I sort of was involved in just like the creative world through Kyle and like being on like the podcast with Kyle and doing all that stuff. But you sort of have like been in that creative world. Your, your father works, you know, in the um, like uh, post-production post -production. industry yeah. where it's like, you know, they'll film a commercial or a, a movie and he like makes sure the color correction is really good on the videos or photo shoot or whatnot. So I feel like you've always been privy to like this world. So, and like you you've got friends now and you've seen people who've um you know done their own thing and sort of like in in more or less terms created their own brand but like what's been your take on like the industry and like how that whole world um is important to you so like for me like honestly dude i've like i grew up around this so i mean even as a kid like my dad he was an audio engineer so like as a kid growing up like Literally, he was in recording studios when he lived in Miami. He lived in Miami for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And when he lived in Miami, he was out there, like, as an audio engineer. So he used to, like, mix um, mostly commercials, but he did he did music as well, too. Um, but he, like, was at recording studios literally mixing and engineering uh, commercials and all these things. And as a kid, I used to, like, every every summer I'd go out with her. I grew up here in New York in the city, but mm -hmm. every summer I'd go out and spend the summers with him and and I'd go out there, he'd bring me to his studio, and, like, a couple of times, it's actually pretty cool, like, he would bring me to, um, in the booth, like, I remember one time, there was a, a Sprite commercial, and he needed, like, like, a sound, like, a sound bite from, like, a kid, and it was, like, I had to do, like, this, like, sigh sound, it was, like, these two, a lemon and lime, a sort of old-ass Sprite commercial, <laughs> and it was, uh, like, a lemon and lime, like, racing to get to each other, I just remember this, yeah, and, um, he was just like, yeah, I need like a soundbite. So when they finally met up with each other, there was like a sigh of relief. It was like, ah. So he put me in the booth. And, like, <laughs> yeah, I remember like, that I sound, man. I remember that commercial. You're the you're the uh, guy. <laughs> you know, you're, you know, no, 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 you haven't seen that commercial since whatever, bro. It was like, yeah, but um, but yeah, it was cool. And so I've always been just like growing up around that. And uh, yeah, man. To be honest, like you know, you and I we like, went to high school together. And when I finally went to college and like kind of went our like did our own thing, I went to UCF, mm -hmm. and I was out there. I was, I was enjoying it, but I just felt like I wasn't really like, I don't know. I just felt like I wasn't like in the right place. And mm -hmm. and uh, when I came back for one summer between my freshman and sophomore year, I had an opportunity. My dad like hooked me up with a a dope internship, and I like started worked at this company that he was working at as a post production company, Company Three. Mm -hmm. And I was there, and um, I literally was like a, a messenger. Like I was like delivering packages. Like it was, it was the vault basically. So yep. like the vault was basically like film would come in, and this is like when film was like 
more prominent because everything like a mail room for like a just regular yeah, office space type of thing. Yeah. So like some everything would come yeah. in, I had to log it, like and then deliver packages, all these things, and and it was a it was a summer internship, and I really enjoyed it. I had a good time. And then went back to school. Mm-hmm. And Florida, and when I was there, I just, I don't know, I just, like, didn't feel like I was really, like, where I needed to be. And then, you know, when I came back the following summer, my dad was like, hey, listen, like, if you feel like this is something you really want to do or take an opportunity for, like, you can do this, but, like, you have to, like, grind your ass out, like, and, like, do something, like, start from the the same way you started, like, you know what I mean? Like, so I did, I basically took the same job, came back, because they needed somebody, and I literally started delivering packages, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And I worked at that place for like seven years. Um, anyway, long story short, I went from there learning post-production on the commercial side, features film side, everything, to doing my own little production, which I worked with Jamal. Like we went all went to high school together. Jamal, yep. like the same kind of deal, bro. Like, you know, he's doing his thing, like doing photography, yeah. videography, whatever. And then... Uh, Let me take it a step back real quick, do- real fast. Because I, I just want to yeah, ask yeah. you, because... Um, I don't know if this is because you your your father was sort of in the industry and like he was from Miami and had some swag this and that, but yeah. when you moved to New Rochelle, so to back it up a little bit, I met you. Um, you moved to New Rochelle in high school, maybe tenth or eleventh grade, something like that. It was like like a little bit into eleventh grade, yeah. Okay. So it was like later into high school, which has to be sort of hard for someone at that age because at 11th and 12th grade kids have already made their friends they started thinking about colleges so like bringing anybody new into your group is sort of like you got to make an impact on somebody and something I saw in you was like you had swag you know you were into music you were pretty like you know just like you had a good demeanor about yourself um which I think a lot of people noticed but then a lot of other people talking to them uh, in the past would be like, yeah, he was sort of quiet, never really, you know, this or that. Um, but was that hard for you or tough for you? Like trying to make no group friends at 11, 12th grade? I mean, to be honest with you, yeah, on paper it was, it was definitely difficult for me. Um, like I said, I'm like very selective about who, like the company I keep. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, you know, a lot of people say that, uh, I think people more sh- like should be that way. Um, mm-hmm. uh, for me, dude, like I said, with you, bro, like we went to the same high school, but I didn't meet you because the only reason I met you, like, as you remember, is like because we worked at the same ice cream shop. Yeah. And like we went to the same, and that was the only reason we met. Like I didn't even meet you in high school. At high school, bro, like I had blinders on. Like I had no interest in like associating myself, like because I just didn't want to be there, to be like completely honest. Like uh-huh. I moved from the city. I was like, all, I like left all my friends. Like I grew up in the city. Like that's like where I'm from, you know? Mm-hmm. And like completely honest with you, like I disassociate myself. Like when people ask me like where I'm from, like I mean I was born and raised there. I only lived in New Rochelle for a year and a half. Yeah. So I don't consider myself like from there. But I did graduate from high school there. So yeah. like that is like that's that's a fact. Like that's a thing. But when push comes to shove, like when anybody asks me anything, like I don't consider myself like from New Rochelle, like ever. Yeah. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? I've always heard but, that from you. You've always taken great yeah, pride in being from Queens, yeah. Like but at the same time it's like I you know I still like gain a lot from it because I got you as a friend. Like I got Jamal as a friend and like, to be honest with you, like, yeah, you guys are the only two like people that I really like. Yes. There are some people that are like a bunch of bounce into like Junie and all those guys like go yeah, to yeah. the home. I fucking love, you know, but in high school I didn't know them. The only mm-hmm. reason I know them is through you. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're my friends because of you. Like mm-hmm. you were like one of like my closest and best friends. Like when I first like was there mm-hmm. and, and a lot of it, we kind of vibed on, like you said, going back to like, you started like on sneakers and like we worked together. We were doing ice cream, like all like selling at an ice cream store, like, yep. you know, for signer, all that shit. Like that was, that was a dope like time, you know, for me and whatever. And like, I, it made me feel like comfortable about it. But to be honest with you, like, you know, like I, I never felt like I was like a part of like that whole like scene, you know, for me, like my closest friends beyond you and Jamal. And then now like Dean and all those guys, but before that in high school, were literally like the people that I like grew up with, you know, yeah. like all in this. Thing. Of course. So uh, it was it was a different. It was different for me because yeah, suburban life. I don't know, man. Like I I grew up in the city. Like I I don't see myself being in a suburb. Like I just you know and like listen to each their own. Like you mm-hmm. do your thing, but. Um, and that's what I want to yeah. ask you too is um, so like I'd mentioned you've got a good sense of fashion, a good sense for music, a good sense for sneakers. You're pretty in tune with just like the, the culture, you know, like you're, 
like whether it's lingo or you know you have a good <laughs> feel for just like what's happening in like the industry or whatever do you right. think um you know being raised in new york city sort of molded you into that like um or was it your father or you know mother just being involved mm-hmm. in music or whatnot like because I think it's- you, you've seen New York City life, and like you were raised in New York City, you know the train systems yeah. better than anybody. I'll ask you trains, <laughs> but like, what's the difference between being raised in the city and then also you have younger brothers too who've been raised in the suburbs? Do you see a difference between yeah. yourself and your brothers? Listen, like the one thing I always preach to everybody is uh, growing up in the city, you become independent at a young age, and mm-hmm. I think that's like something like regardless of like what kind of background like if you grow up in a city especially like near like a metropolitan city like new york you become independent you know? like i started taking the subway when i was 12 years old like by myself like i literally was um i was living in queens and then i moved to manhattan but i was still going to school in queens mm-hmm. when i was 12 and uh that was one thing that like i pride myself on because yeah, like literally, I was on my own, literally twelve years old, taking the subway. And I, when I would, I remember being in a Rochelle and telling people this, like taking the subway. They'd be like, "What? I have no idea what that like. Yeah. What do you mean taking this? Like, yeah, people were like, I have no idea what you mean. I'm like, dude, it's like not that difficult. And that's another thing too is people think it's like crazy or difficult. Like, dude, it's not that hard. Like, that just, shit is like just, Japanese or something, man. Not, <laughs> not. Everybody thinks that, but I promise you, it's not. Um. Anyway, uh, but yeah, that, that's one thing. It's you know, you're immersed in this, in this world of like being independent and which is, which is a great thing. And I think a lot of like, you know, people just need to have that, especially youth. Like me, I think it's important for them to like develop a sense of independence because you kind of learn how to take care of yourself, you know, like when it comes to like, listen, not everybody has street smart, street smarts or like, or is in a position to like develop street smarts. Mm-hmm. But if you can kind of give yourself a way to kind of be alone um, and not to get too deep, but I just think that like, if you can kind of separate yourself from like being pampered or taken care of, and yep. you can just like do your own thing, you're going to like benefit yourself in the long run a lot more than like anybody who's like constantly being like, no, you know what I mean? Like that kind of vibe. 100%. So, so I just, I think that, you know, that's one thing that I've always prided myself on is that I had the opportunity to like become very independent at a young age. And I've always appreciated that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but again, going back to the subways, bro, it's not that difficult, man. I promise. I don't give you. I think you got it now, because honestly, like nah. whenever you, yeah, you ask the same ones, and I think you stopped asking me. So I think now you're already. You're like, I got this shit. Like, <laughs> good, good. what? What do you think? And and not to get too like deep into it, but maybe it, we will or whatnot. But like, so you're very yeah. independent, like in New York City, doing the subways, this or that. What do you think? Because you had mentioned you went to college and like it, it, it wasn't your vibe type of deal. And like you were sort of on your own island at UCF as well, you know, like was that more so just like the school side of it? Were you thinking like I need to be back in the city doing, you know, music or, you know, movies, stuff like that? Yeah, I think um, like listen, why didn't though, it work the reason, out too well? The reason I went there was because I had an opportunity because, listen, my dad grew up living in Miami for 10 years. Um, I don't know if people know this, but in Florida, they have a great program. It's yeah. a, as a Florida resident, you can put money away. It's a 529 program or uh, prepaid or whatever it's called. Um, as a Florida resident, you can put money away for a kid, for your kid, uh, to go to college. And basically, at the at the end of when I was done with high school, my dad had school paid for for 14, because he lived there for 10 years. So he had tuition paid for, and it was an opportunity for me to like go somewhere to there's great universities in Florida. Like that's why, like I'll never bad mouth like UCF or like where I, that's where I went to school. Like Florida has a great state school system, I think. And like from my experiences, like even just like being there, um, I think it's it's a great place for somebody to develop a good education. Mm-hmm. I just think the environment wasn't for me. Like mm-hmm. I just didn't like to be in in Florida. I yeah. just that's just you know. Um, and it's in like Orlando area, right? It's pretty spread it's out. Orlando, and you said there's a lot of commuters. Yeah, it's a cool city, but I just, again, I just, like, I like to be around, like, a metropolitan area, you know what I mean? Like, Orlando is considered a major city of Florida, mm. but when you compare Orlando to New York, like, they don't, they don't go, no, hand, you know what I mean? The same. So, you know, for me, it was like, okay, cool, so I had this opportunity to, like, go to school there, but ultimately, I was like, you know what, I'm not really vibing with being in this place, like, 
two season year. I like personally like having four seasons. Like I like, you know, being the winter, summer, spring, and fall, like the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you have that here. And uh, you know, also too, man, family, bro. Like my family's all here. Like I grew up this year, like my whole family's all here. Like to be able to have that like at an arm's like arm's length, like well, who you know? 100%. Um and I just felt like I needed to be back here. And then like I said, my dad was like, Listen, like if this is what you want to do, and like I think if you're if you feel like this is like you're ready to do this, then take the shot, do this. I'll give you the opportunity, but you have to fucking put your fucking like hands down and just like do this thing and like make it happen. So yeah, that's what I, I did. I re I respect your dad um a lot just because one, I think he's super creative. I think he's just an awesome guy. And I think he's he he um and, and and people listening don't know your dad, but he's very successful in what he does. Um uh, and I think he got that way because he gives people a chance. He sees that, you know, someone is willing to grind and like whether he puts you in the position that you want to be in, like for you, I'm sure you wanted to be doing, you know, major stuff right off the bat, but he he'll give you the right opportunity to like showcase yourself. So he'll say, you know, you're going to start off in the, in the vault, the mail room. And if you stay with it and you show me that you're really passionate about it, like he'll follow your trail to take you to the next step. It's not like he's gonna, um, you know, just give you a shot and let you hang out to dry. Like that's something that's I've always appreciated your, about your father. And I think that's why he's one of like the successful business people. Whereas there's other successful business people that, may have a son or a friend or something like that and just throw them a job and then, you know, we'll just let them either slack off or fail. Yeah. Um, but that's not something your father ever did in my eyes with what I saw. He gave no. me an opportunity to meet with him. No, and that's the thing. It's like, I know like you're the same way, bro. Like, he loves you. Like, he always asks about you. And, like, he's a good dude. And, and yeah, he's very successful. Like, listen, like, his story, not to get in too deep with it, but he – um he didn't even graduate high school. Like he's from Brooklyn, like grew up in like a shitty part of Brooklyn, like, mm -hmm. and just like worked his ass off. Had me at a very young age. Like my dad was 21 when I was born, you know yeah. what I mean? And like get his life together. And he did. And he, and in a lot of ways he, he's always told me that he's like, you know, he's been very like thankful of me because in some ways, maybe if I wasn't around that, he probably wouldn't have did, did what he's been able to do, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Anyway, beyond that, he's, like, always been the kind of person that, like, he'll give you a shot. And if you show something to him, he'll support you to to the end of days. You 100%. know what I mean? Yeah. You know? And, and like, but he'll, and he's willing to give a shot. Listen, there are some times that, like, with anything that, like, I've, and I've had my moments, too. Like, he's just kind of, like, you know, had to kind of keep, like, bro, like, you need to get your shit together. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, listen, like, like, you know, and and he would also be the kind of person who would literally, like, tell me like bro like you need to like pick up your slack like he's yep. like he's a very like he's very passionate and mm -hmm. he's very like thoughtful and yeah he's a good person to have in your corner yeah and um he and seems reasonable dad. too i mean it's just like a lot of kids um you know if they're in college a lot of their parents is just like you know stick it out stay with it do you know but like he saw you were passionate about something else which yeah. a lot of parents nowadays don't do that. They force their kids to stay in school and they're not happy. And then, you know, they turn to maybe drugs and alcohol, like whatever they do, you know, but it's just like yeah. they do that to rebel against their parents. And uh, he seems like he's understanding um, to let you try out different things. One thing I want to ask you going back to high school and, and yeah. you'll, pro you'll probably get a kick out of this, but this was maybe like four years ago or something like that. Like I think when you, when I first was sort of, um, like Drew and Dean were sort of, I was put like, I was telling them to get in touch with you because they were in the city and whatnot. And I was like, do you remember yeah. my boy Adam from New Rochelle High School? And Drew was like, yeah, I remember him. It's just like, I feel like when he was, he used to drive his car with his headphones on. And yeah. that was one thing I always <laughs> wanted to ask you was like, I, and Why? That, this was before like Bluetooth and stuff like that. So I think you were listening to music, but what did your, because you had was the Silver G, G um, Golf or something, right? Yeah, I had a, I had a, I had a G, yeah, the, uh, Volkswagen Golf, a, yeah. a little great Golf, yeah, a little hatchback. Well, um, did yeah, the radio I did, not I did, work? No, the radio worked. I didn't have a CD player, and I couldn't like. And at the time, obviously, I didn't have like there was no Bluetooth or there was no aux cord. Yeah. Uh, so I literally wanted to listen to the music. I don't want to listen to the radio, and I have tapes, and like I like I said, I didn't have a CD player in my shit. So like I literally 
listen i want to listen to my music so i would put the headphones in it was mad. i always listen. used to remember you driving around the circle and i would see you with your headphones on and i would always think it too and i never asked you that being your boy for yeah. you know, every year is like why you had the headphones in but that brings me to my next point is just like you've always been passionate about um <laughs> what music music man and it's just like you well, know all sense. the good I, songs like bro how could you not do the same thing? Like, I think anybody would, if you had, if you had, if you had a car or whatever, you had no radio or yeah. like the radio, like barely worked and you had no CD player, but you wanted to listen to your own music. What, and you had like a, a yeah, CD player, whatever it is. Yes. You'd put the head, like, that's what I would do. I put the headphones in because I wanted to listen to my shit. I don't want to listen to anything else, you know? No, no. I respect so. you for that. But like, my question is like, how do you filter out? what music you listen to because you you always know like new artists you know new songs like you listen to like i'll listen to an album or i won't even listen to an album i'm more of just like a radio whatever the hit song is and like that's how i was with kanye west on his old school cds but you would like know like songs in how do you have time to listen to whole cds like i never can i I don't have the patience to do it i don't know yeah, I know what you're saying. Um, even to, honestly, nowadays, I don't think I listen to as much m- music as I used to, um, which is crazy because now it's even more accessible. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I've I've always like been very just like a- appreciated like my eclectic like you know like being appreciating eclectic music. So like I've always been like I grew up I grew up on R and B and like Motown. So like my mom, like I say, I always tell people, like I grew up on my mom is Sade, which is like R, like soulful R and B, and then like my dad is Motown, like Stevie Wonder, like yeah. the two of them are like my dad's favorite, my mom's favorite, you know, and they both like the same thing. But um, growing hey, your mom's up, awesome on- too, by the way, if she listens, she's cool people. Also, <laughs> I don't want to yeah, balance that on your mom. dad and then have your mom be like, "Yo, what the fuck?" He didn't even <laughs> well, say no, nothing. <laughs> I get it. Listen, I, listen, like I said, going back to what you said before, your point. You know, I got into this industry through my dad. Like my mom, you know, quick story. She's uh, comes from a finance background, which is something I never wanted to do. So, mm-hmm. um, so I always gravitated towards like you know with my dad stuff with work. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean with music, I just I don't know, bro. Like especially growing up in New York, like you hear everything, man. Like I, you know, I grew up on like hip hop and R and B, and like you know even now, dude. And like again, like going back to like what I'm doing now, like with with like music festivals and all, these, and all these things, like friends of mine that I grew up with, like I never liked like electronic music up until, yeah, probably like five, six years ago, which is the first time I went to uh, um, Coachella, yeah, played out, whatever, but I, I love it. I enjoy it. But the, the first time I went, I was like blown away because I just like, I, there was like a sense of like energy in a box like, view on a lot of these things and and i've been like on that now too so like i listen to that and even now with what i'm doing with music and like now that i'm djing and all these things like i'll take like music that i like grew up on like r&b and like find like oh this would be a dope sample to like put into like a house music song or something like that you know like kind of like blending that stuff um yeah it's just listen again going back to like what we said before growing up in new york bro like you're exposed to like so much and i think if you just if you just kind of like open up a little bit and just like take it all in like i think you're like you'll benefit yourself more than if you like sh- like shield yourself off you know yeah i like, think that's, that's what's part of anything the whole, in, the whole it, it, like anything in general is just like the more you consume and the more you can filter out what's good what's not good the more you know intelligent you'll be the more whatever the the stronger conversation you can hold even just trying like different things bro because like listen i don't i think our connection is like being weird right now yeah but um what i'm trying to say like like bro like you know sometimes you know you just kind of like listen i'm not like this is not my vibe but you know one of the one like first things that like i didn't grow up on house or electronic music i did not at all i grew up like i said hip-hop and rbs uh Motown, like very vocal, like soul stuff. The first time I went to a music festival or like I was in an electronic thing, Mm -hmm. that music was like foreign to me. I had no idea. I was like, this stuff is weird. I used to think it was weird. I used to like this stuff. I was like, I don't want to associate myself with those. I I thought it was a weird thing. Mm -hmm. But when I went there, I just 
kind of like literally was like, you know what, let me let myself loose and enjoy myself. And I just got like a good like energy and not even just from the music itself, but like the vibe of the people that were like listening to it. Everyone was just so like open and nice and just like, eh, this is cool. Like everybody's dancing. Just free, yeah. There was no like, yeah, nobody like nobody had like any weird, you know. And you know, it's like I just was kind of like, oh, this is like good. Everybody's got good energy. So let me just keep vibing to this a little bit. Yeah, that was kind of balancing, and then yeah, it was kind of it was a good thing. So how did you? So you spoke about it a little bit, and like you said, the connection's a little. Weird, so I'm picking up in and out what you're saying, but I'm getting the gist of it. But what, um, how did you start getting involved in DJing? Because I know a lot of people DJ now, and like I, th- you have actually taken time to like learn the craft and like um, appreciate good DJing and bad DJing. One, I want to know um, what goes into like sort of. Well, well, how did you start the whole process of DJing? Yeah, so I mean, to be honest with you, it was uh, me and a friend of mine, my buddy Antonio, um, call him Tone. He's uh, he's actually like taking it like really hard. Like he's Tony Troy. He's like legit, like Tony Troy. Yeah, our <laughs> connections like really weird. I don't know why, but um, anyway, we kind of did a thing like a couple of years ago, like as like a house party, like as, and I literally started it like as like before that I was like just messing around. I was like, Oh, this would be, this would be fun. And I downloaded some free software and I was like, this song sounds good. This song sounds good. Let me kind of figure out how to mix it together. And I was kind of doing that and just messing around. And then eventually it like turned into this thing, uh, where I was like, okay, cool. Like we can maybe make a party out of this. And then we kind of, I started finding songs that I really liked and developing like, you know, like disco, all these like different vibe, like types of sounds. And then literally would like, do these parties and people are like, you know, I would go home, practice it, do my thing. And then I do, do it at a party and people are like, holy shit, that's actually like kind of cool, you know, which I didn't go there to like expect that from anybody. I just went there to like play music that I felt like people would want to hear. Yeah. I literally would like go there and like, I would think, well, this sounds cool to me. I think other people would appreciate this. Let me try this out, and so like I'd play it, and then be like, oh shit, that's actually kind of cool, you know? Yeah. And then I literally I'd be sitting there, and maybe they were drunk or whatever, but they'd still come up and be like, yo, you're killing it right now, like bro, this is cool. And you know, then I'd feel like, oh shit, I'm actually, you know, I'd get gassed up, and I'd be like, yeah, maybe I'm doing something cool, or whatever. And then it just kind of turns this thing to like, and then me and my friends were kind of we had a we developed a, a group, um, and we were all you know kind of like supporting each other and all like. We'd bring all our friends out, and all our friends would be like, "Yeah, we're dancing, have a good time." And then, you know, this, these these venues would like give us these opportunities because we'd reach out to them on some like, "Hey, listen, we're having this little party one night. Can we have this place for a night? You know, we don't really have money to like rent it out. Like, can we just like, you know, do like a minimum at the bar kind of thing? Mm-hmm. You know?" And they'd be like, "Yeah, sure, that's fine." And we do it, and we all show up, and then all of our friends would come, and then it'd be like oh shit like these guys can bring people because like that's the thing we're like friends first right but we were like realizing that like we could you got a little following make the people, people. yeah 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 we have, we have a following but we could also like make people groove and dance and it was like kind of cool it's not like and you're some dude, bozos I, I'll coming I'll through right like you you've you, you got a good crew of people coming through so like the bar is gonna want that yeah, that's the thing it's like even just that like having listen I mean, the best thing in life is having, like, good friends and family, like, relationships. So, like, if you have that first, bro, you, I think, you know, like, everybody says you can do anything you want to do. You absolutely could. Mm-hmm. But I think if you have the, the support and backing of people who, like, truly believe in you, like, you really can, you know. And it's it's a nice thing to, like, have that. Yeah. And not to get, like, super, like, deep. But, um, but it was, like, cool to, like, have that. And then we would do it. And then those same people would be like. You know, because they would be there to support us and be like, yo, you will be here regardless, you know. Mm-hmm. But when we, they were there and they were like, holy shit, these guys are actually like good, you know. It was like, because even if we were like terrible, they would they would never say it. They're just like, yeah, we're here for you. Don't worry yeah, about yeah, yeah. it. But then, oh shit, these guys are actually kind of good, you know. And It's that rewarding was like, that to was, see that, I'm sure. Yeah, it was like really cool. And then, you know, then we'd like do a party and I'd be DJing. Um, and then somebody that I'd never seen in my life before, for whatever reason, came in and was like, 
came up as like, yo, you're really good. And that would be like, that would get me like super hot. Like, isn't that so cool? Like, I mean, like, I, like, yo, oh, that feeling is like, I'm telling you, there's such, there's no better feeling. And you're like playing a song, you're picking and you're like play it and like whatever it is. And you look up and, and everybody's just like dancing and having a good time. Yep. I'm telling you that's such a like you know what that is though? That I, like it, listen it's a passion like that's every like somebody i feel like everybody should experience that like thing for me it was that you yeah. know and i'm not even trying to say here that like, i'm trying to like become some sort of musician like listen i appreciate creative like music and like i'm not you know djing all these things and, and i'm not looking at it as like a, a career thing for me but it's a genuine hobby and it's something that like i really like want to continue doing but because it's like it makes me feel really good and it's like it's a dope like feeling and it's cool. I think that's why you um, – I think that's why people want to acknowledge you and I think that's why you're good at it is because people see that when you're doing it, you're just really enjoying it. You know, you're not doing it because you're trying to get paid. You're not trying to do it because you're trying to get famous or like you're not trying to do it for whatever reason. Like you're not trying to impress anybody. You're doing it because you started it because you thought, which turns out to be a good thought, your collabs of music and what you listen to. Like I said from the beginning, I took yeah. uh, interest in you. Like for whatever reason, we became friends because we worked at the ice cream store. But I've always, you know, looked up to you in a sense because you, you've got a fashion sense. You're you've got a music sense. You know, like yeah. and I'm being for real. Like you take pride in like what you Appreciate wear that. and stuff like that. So like someone seeing you just jamming out to your music is just like damn he's killing it i want to go recognize this dude and like to your point even with this podcast like when i started out the channel i was like yeah i'm gonna try it i'm gonna do it um because people would say stuff on the kyle and corn podcast like hey start out do your own thing and at first i was like let me do it whatever but now when i'm doing these chats like I, I actually really enjoy it like i love like i think it's awesome that like i could sit down with you right now and and talk and talk to my dad and stuff like that and when i see comments from people that i have no idea who they are saying like man yeah. good so question like how it is it keeps you it it, it gives you that gas like it, you're refilling your gas a little bit so now when you go to the yeah. next gig you got that fuel like oh i'm, yeah. I'm gonna kill it you know yeah bro and like that's a uh, dude i'm telling you like they're like i know exactly how you like, see this is it's a different thing with like with your with your podcast and all these things like it's different in the sense that, like, you, I'm not doing podcasts. I'm doing DJing. You're doing this. But, like, bro, that feeling, it, like, I know exactly. Like, you know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about. Like, when you feel like one person says, like, yo, this is actually really dope. This is cool. Yep. It gives you, like, yeah, you know what? This is cool. Like, you know, yeah. I feel like I'm, like, hyped about it. And it's it's a good feeling. So It's also a cool. cool feeling, too, because I, everyone has the feeling when they want, like, there's that famous past the aux cord in the car you know like yeah. you, you want to put on a good song where everybody yeah. in the car is bumping to it and like if it's whack they're gonna let you know like nah you don't get the sticks anymore like get off this shit but like <laughs> it's got to be such a good feeling when you put on a banger you know because there, there happen. you ha you will have your your like your down moment like but bad moments too like there have been times where I, like i play like i'll jump in and you know like i just you just have a golf night and there, yeah, there yeah. have there, with that will happen. Like I've had that before and I'm just like, and then you people are like, Oh, you know, like I mean, it happens happen. every, comedians have bad nights. Jordan had a bad everybody night, you know, like does. everybody does. That's how you get don't better. Let, you know, don't let it sway you, bro. But like, you know, those moments that where you have people like literally come up to you and like, cause listen, here's the difference. Like I've, like I said, like I'll have if one one person comes up, it's like, yo, this song is dope. Or like even like when I see somebody shazamming a song, like yeah, if yeah. I'm playing a song jang and like they shazam it, that gets me because I do that all the time. If I'm out like listening to a show, or I'm like, and I just and like this song is dope. I want to hear what I know what the song is. If I see somebody doing that, that for me is like if I see one person doing that, like I'm 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 good. I'm yeah. hyped. It's gotta know? be rewarding too. Like even just throwing on a banger and seeing like the people on the floor are like just not in their head or like wilding out like yeah so yeah yeah it's something but um i want to ask on the dj front what are yeah. like like dj's thoughts um and your personal thoughts around like celebrities who try to just get up on stage and be like a, a dj like i know shaquille o'neal sort of is really passionate about it but like 
people just say a DJ gets up there and, you know, just flicks the, like, just moves their hands a little bit. Like, I, I know that there's, like, an art to it, and it's like, you know, there's a lot that goes into it, but is it sort of like you look at these celebrities doing it and you sort of just laugh, like, oh, look it. I like, mean, listen, there, are, there, it's very, like, there's a thing. It's like, this is why, like, I'm not taking it seriously to the point of, like, trying to make something out of it because I know the whole, like, the whole industry or whatever is very saturated. Like everybody's trying to do the same thing, you know? So like, I get that and that's fine. Um, if I, like I said, if I can make my, my small circle, like have a good time, cool. Then I'm like, you know, I'll die happy. That's cool for me. Uh-huh. Um, but there, you know, for people like that who have like Shaq or whatever, like who are like big, like mainstay celebrities, I've read his thing. Like I've read, I've read this interview about him. Like, you know, apparently he according to him he used to dj like before when he was in like as a kid like he used to like oh, have really? some turntables yeah th- this is like a, i read an article about because i was curious about it i was like is, is he some guy who like literally just like oh you know what i have a name so let me just like jump on some decks and like do the thing and listen maybe he is not because the way the technology is you know like basically like it could be somebody you could literally plug in a USB or whatever, and it could just play out, and you could just touch buttons to make it sound like put some effects on it, but it's literally doing its own thing. Maybe he does that now. I don't know. I don't know him. I don't. I've never watched him play. Yeah. Uh, but from what I read, like saw with his interview, or like read from his interview, based on what he's saying, like he did grow up around a DJ culture. So and and in that time, you literally had to fucking like take vinyl records and like put them on and like Scratch dude, vinyl yeah. DJs. Like I have utmost respect for those guys because you know, I've seen them. I've, tr- I've tried a couple of times. Like that stuff is like a whole new world to me. That's you know? like and the legit, like, like the, like, the, like, like, like scratching. Legit. Yo, like there's like, you know, they make it so easy. And this is why it's been so easy for me is because it's like with the technology and stuff, like it's like I can find like a like BPM, which is like beats per minute. I can find the name like the song BPM quick. It analyzes the whole thing and I can match them quick. Mm-hmm. When it comes to vinyl, if you don't if you don't know what the BPM of the song is, you have to find it and you have to like literally like slow it down or speed it up to match the next one. And it's like having it's there's no there's no screen in front of you telling you like, oh, you're doing you have to like bring this up a little bit or bring this down a little bit. So I always have the utmost respect for vinyl DJs. And like I said, going back to Shaq, like somebody like him, if he comes from that background, I like which he says he does, I respect it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's he knows what is going to DJing. Um with other ones, listen, if you have an outlet, if you have a plug or you have a you know, a, a source of like of a of a following, whatever it is, listen, more power to you. I, I would hope that those people like actually give it a legitimate shot and like try. Mm -hmm. Um, I have seen, I have been at parties where before, like where there's like a social media, like popular DJ Mm -hmm. is playing and I've seen them like play and they do nothing Mm -hmm. like, and that like, it doesn't irk me in the sense that like, I don't get upset or like annoyed. I'm just kind of like, come on, man. You know what I mean? Like put on a little bit more of a I'm not going to be tight or like be a hater. Like, listen, I understand like, they have the following, that, so they they have the plug to be able to and the pull to be able to do what they have to do. Mm-hmm. But at least give it a, a, an honest shot. I'm not gonna like be like, oh, that person, you know, like so, I'm not gonna badmouth them. But it's like whatever. But, like, like put on the show a little bit. Know, like honest, may, at least be, make me think you're doing if, it. If, if, to be honest with you, bro, if you, if you have, I don't know, maybe this makes me sound like a seller, but bro, if you, if you have the opportunity to do something like that, like. Then yo, good, like more power to you. Then, then but do you take think it. there's also like hope- a cool factor with with DJing too? That it's almost just like if that person was to OD and be like trying to do too much, people would be like, "Oh, this dude's whack. He's corny." Where it's just like you sort of got to keep your cool factor with being a DJ, right? I don't think so. I don't think. I mean, there, there's definitely like a you know, it, there is a cool factor. Like it's cool. Like dude, like I said, going back to that that feeling of like being like high. Like I, you're like up there like playing music and everybody's dancing to what you're playing and and it's cool. You know, um, that's one thing. I like listen. Going back to like if, if a DJ doesn't know what they're doing, but they have a good attitude about it, mm-hmm. I'd give them more of a like a pat on the or like like adapt or like, you know, like, yo, you know what? You did your thing. Then if there was a DJ up there that like 
thought they were the shit and they like had this attitude of like, you know, I'm the fucking man, like I'm doing whatever it is I'm doing, but they were doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah, and they yeah. were just like, people could do, you know, whatever, whatever I want, you know? Yeah. Then that to me, it's like, doesn't like, that wouldn't fly with me, but yeah. I just like, yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate people who like put in the effort and like, listen, I understand like sometimes like it's not, you're not always going to expect that from somebody and, you know, especially from somebody who's like a, a celebrity or like who's constantly traveling. Dude, it takes time, man. Like it's, it's not easy to like, just like wing a set. Like people think it's like, yes, you can kind of prepare and do these things, but if you wanted to put your heart and soul to it and do it like proper, it takes time, bro. Like it's not yeah. like something that you do with like you know, in an hour and like knock it out, you know? Yeah, so, no, definitely. I mean, what people do. I yeah. I think, so you have no animosity towards people that like, I've always been under the impression, like I paid a lot of money for a DJ at my wedding. Like you stood up at my wedding. Um, I paid a lot of money for a DJ at my wedding and the dude would put yeah. on, he was putting on wax songs and there came a point where I went over to him and was just like, play this, play this, play this, where after I was almost like, I could have probably just put on an iPod and just put on banger after banger after banger. But then again, to your point, like you want like someone behind there where like, you've got to feel out the vibe too. Like, right. You know, if, if you see the crowd is vibing one way, then it's like, all right, I got to switch it up and flip, flip to this, you know? So like there is some um, benefit to having someone, you know, really vibing with the crowd and not just having an iPod go, you know? No, of course. And like I said, going like if like with your wedding thing, like if if your guy if your guy was like playing songs and you, and you felt like you had to tell him what to play, then I'll be honest with you, bro. Like I don't. That's not a good DJ. You know yeah. what I mean? Like listen, because there are moments like if you hire a DJ, like if and he has the mindset of like what he's going to play, and you hired him, like listen, like yes, then he'll then you should tell him. But at that point, I think what a good DJ would do is like maybe hear one, two, three of your songs and be like, okay, then like I can understand where this person's like going and then take that and do his own thing and then, but make you happy. Yeah. If every time you have to come up is the end of the song, like you'll play this next, play this next, you know, he's and then you feel job. like it's, it's not doing a good job, you know? Let me, um, let me a ask lot you, of, that's, let me ask you something real quick. If yeah. I, if I request some shit, are are people getting the songs that they request or is that are you listening to it one you probably can't even hear them but if a girl comes up to the booth because i'm sure you get girls that are drinking coming up playing like play the new pitbull song or some shit uh, you know like do requests listen, ever get played yeah i mean it depends like um like i said I, um, the music that i normally play is like dance and house music and normally like 99.9 percent .9 of the time like that stuff is not really requested it's sure. not like those parties are not like nobody comes up and requests you know and even then like no i personally think nobody should come up and request a song from a dj um unless they're hired unless you've paid this person to play your party i don't think like you know what i mean if you show up to a venue and the person's like doing his thing I don't think you should like go up and request a song from them. That makes sense. Yeah. Unless you unless you pay them to play. If yep. you pay, like I said, your wedding case in point, you have every right to tell them whatever the like because that's you hire them. Yeah. Um, but when it comes, like I said, with house music, you would never do that. Uh, there are moments where yes, you like the, uh, somebody will come up and they'll make a request, and you do your best to kind of cater to them. Like I said, if I was doing a party for my like my one of my parties that I do with my friends and it's house music and somebody requests hip hop, my immediate reaction is like, listen, this is not a hip hop party. I'm sorry. Like if you we're not going to play hip hop tonight, if you want hip hop, I suggest you go somewhere else. That's it. Mm -hmm. um, the worst is when they are drunk and have an attitude and they give me shit. Then it's like, I don't have to tell you know, like a dude, like I don't know what to tell you. Like yeah. this is like not what's, you know, Um there, there is one time that I was playing house music, and it's the only time I've gotten a request. And this, this girl like came up. This is a while ago, and she requested a song that I actually had. Because huh. that's the thing: when I play with my music, it's like, on a USB, yep, and it's like all preloaded. So like I have to download music every once in a while, load it up. So it's not like I can access the internet and like play it. like the way I play. It's all on like USB. So I have to preload everything. Yeah, and she requested a song that was actually like perfect for that moment um it was yeah it was uh what is it 
Uh, so baby, if you want me, you oh, got yeah, to it's a banger. Each love. Yeah. Yo, it's a, that's like a classic song. And it was like so perfect in that moment. She's like, do you have this song? And I remember I like, I was like, yes, I have this song. And I was like, I like my face lit up. Cause I was like, that is the perfect. Cause I was like actually in the moment thinking what song would I play next right uh -huh. now? Cause you have to think about what you're going to play next. Read the crowd. And I played that and the place like went nuts. I was like, man. So, yeah. I mean, and like I, she, I she lined aside. it up perfectly. Yeah. And I, and I told, I actually pulled her aside afterwards. I was like, listen, like that was a great song. I was like, have you ever thought about DJ? She's like, I do it all the time for my friend. I, I don't know her anymore. It was literally yeah, yeah. a one night thing, but I told her, I was like, if you ever like, I know it's one song, whatever, but like, that was like a great like suggestion, you know, like I've never heard that from, and even my friends who DJ, like they've never taken a, a request. Like they, none of them have taken a request. That's the one request I've ever taken. Cause I thought, felt like it was such a right like time for it. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is fair. So, well, I mean, yeah. some people like, I mean, maybe she has good timing. Maybe she just coincidentally asked at the right time. But like you see that with funny hecklers at a comedy show or something like that. Like usually someone yells something out. They're corny as fuck. But like there's some times where like someone just yells something at like the right time, either at a baseball game or like football. Yeah. Like usually at a sporting event, someone's yelling something stupid. But there's some funny times where it's like you need like just at the perfect moment someone will yell the right thing that you you like and you did the right thing you give them a little head nod you give them like you're like yo good nice like that was good you know but like so she caught you at the right time yeah she caught she was at the perfect time and like i said normally like if it was if she requested something that i like didn't have or didn't even want to play i like if i had if it was something that i like didn't want to play or like if it was hip hop i'd be like listen it's not a hip hop party but if it was something i had but it wasn't like time, like in my mind, I wasn't felt like it was ready to play. I would have been honest. It's like, I'll try and work it in. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to say like, no, like, you know, if it was something, but you know, I kind of just like, you have to work. It's literally reading a crowd and like working with the crowd and like being able to talk to these people. And like, if she, like I said, if she suggested something that I, maybe I had, uh, but it wasn't the right time for it, I would have mm -hmm. said, I'm going to try and work that in. Like, like, you know, like that kind of thing. How does it work um, with, um, and uh, you're not like a crazy drink or anything like that, but like, do, does the bar give you drinks? Like, do you have to be conscious? Cause you're at a bar, people are getting drunk. Like, uh, oh, I mean, dude, uh, it, dude, it varies depending on the venue, but like, I mean, some of the, you've seen, as you've seen on like bar stool and like those stuff, like we have videos of like people who literally come up thinking that we're the bar and like, <laughs> have like, so we get a drink, like, yeah, I, I literally, I'll, I'll, have, I'll have to send them to you. Like, you can maybe cut them into this video or something. But um, he literally has like vid, like videos of people coming up, like at the at the DJ booth, like, hey, let me get a vodka soda or let me get a vodka cranberry, oh. like wasted. And then um, my other boy has done the same thing where he's like, because the U we use USB to like plug in like a like all our music is on USB, but it looks like a jewel, and everybody's smoking jewels right now. <laughs> I don't smoke jewels. But like there's been times where like I was like put the USB like it made it look like a jewel and people were like <laughs> they thought it was like a jewel or whatever yeah oh um and those 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 are fun those are funny ass moments a lot of times it's like obviously like like college kids and shit but like but yeah it's 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 funny as hell um so you yeah, you I'll, mentioned uh, I'll send you some videos of like those we have those moments for sure yeah I want to see I mean there's that funny video I think it was on Barstool or somewhere. Of that girl, um, she I think she was just ordering like a drink from whatever it was. Sambuca. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. For sambuca. Yeah. yeah, she's like, well, for sambuca or something like that. <laughs> I, and I literally have the same thing. Dude, yo, the guy's like, he looks like he's like one drink away from like falling flat on his face. And he's asking, what was he asking for? I think it was like vodka or something, like a oh. vodka soda. But he was wasted. It was like, and 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 he kept asking, and we thought it was a joke. We thought he was like, like playing like the the game, like to because he thought he was like referencing that as a joke. Yeah, yeah. And we realized he was serious. So like my boy like whipped out his phone and was like, "Say that one more time." Oh. So he like wait, and the guy's like, "Let me get a vodka soda." And we're like, "They're DJ." Like, bro, this isn't the bar. You know what's crazy though? So he probably went over to the to bar you. and got his vodka soda. <laughs> Yeah, oh, definitely, yeah. It was done. Um, yeah, man. You mentioned it earlier, and, it, like, it was sort of choppy. Um, and hopefully this is still good. It's a little choppy, but what yeah, is – so um, 
what's Coachella like? Because you've been there a couple of times. Is it so worth all the hype? Is it um, is it definitely what it's you know sought out to be or whatever? Yeah. This- no, um, I hope the connection's okay. I hope you're getting all this recording. Um, anyway, Coachella, dude. Uh, listen, for me, listen. Coachella's developed this this like identity of like being very like scenic. Like everybody like who's there like just wants to be there for like a scene. Yeah. Uh, there's two weekends to so weekend one and weekend two. Weekend one is more of like the trendy like weekend to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, I've done both. I've literally there was a point where I used to alternate, uh, but I've I've learned that weekend two is better, and I'll get to that point as to why in a second. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my first experience with Coachella was in 2014. Um, my friend, one of my other good friends, Jorge, that I you've met him before. He's the like Spanish shiny Bravo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, yeah, yeah. No, I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he had been to festivals before, and my family. Um, had a place in Palm Springs and he was like, yo, that that's where the festival is. And I was like, do you want to go? And I was like, I've never been to a music festival before. Let's go. So we bought tickets like very last minute and we went and I remember just like walking in there and just like, there was just like this like whoosh, like this crazy whoa factor. And I was like, man, this place is amazing. And, you know, I got super lucky because of the lineup. Like that was like the, the 10 year reunion of outcast uh, Nas was there, Damn. like all these artists that like I'd never like, I never really went to live music, and I got to see these this crazy lineup. Twenty fourteen was like one of the, you know, one of the best like memorable lineups in recent history from that festival, mm-hmm. and I was fortunate enough to like go there, and I was just like, man, this place is great. Like I want to come here again, you know, and I've been going there ever since. So now I just finished my sixth year, um, and I've done both weekends. And, uh, like I said, for most people, like it's more of like, it's become like a meme basically. Like people are just like, yeah, Coachella, like everybody just wants to go there and be like in this trendy situation. And yes, there is a huge group of that. Um, but I am like, I go every year because I genuinely, and I don't mean this to sound cheesy, but I really do like genuinely like enjoy the music and the experience. And I just want my friends to be there too. So like I've, when I started with him, it was just me and him. And I never got invited, bro. since then. <laughs> I'm just kidding. If you want to, yeah, that's bullshit. I know, I know. You have absolutely. And you're like, I don't know if I could do that, bro. I don't know if this is like for me. <laughs> I'm just messing. Um, you're always invited, man. But um, but yeah, so like it's literally like developed this thing. It's like we rent, then you know, we rented a house, and like we have this. All my good, all my good friends were there, and it was just like, man, this is like a fun time, and it's a good, it's a good like place to be, and like listen to good music. You know, listen, for somebody who's never been to a music festival, um, I recommend it because beyond the fact that it's like, it's, you know, that whole thing, that is a beautiful place, bro. Like Palm Springs, like Coachella Valley is a beautiful, like, just to go there on vacation, like not beyond the festival. Like, if you ever want to go like to California and like do something like different, go to like Palm, Palm Springs, like Coachella Valley. It is beautiful, man. There's like, the trees, the sunsets, the mountains, it's a desert. It's literally in the in the middle of the desert, but it's like absolutely gorgeous. And if you're there like for the festival, it's on these grounds that are like in the middle of it all and you look around and it's mountains and trees and it's like this sunset, it's it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and then you're there with music that you actually want to listen to. It'll it to me it was life-changing and in a lot of ways it helped influence my appreciation for music now especially as djing like at this point in my life you know so um i i listen i like i'm a firm supporter of it and i I understand people's like reservations about it uh with the whole like you know it being quote-unquote bougie and all these things like i get it i understand that it's developed that because of like instagram and social media and all that shit um but uh but yeah i think let let me ask even even if not that yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, since, um, like, y- you mentioned that, like, the way people look at it or, like, everybody knows about it now, do you think it could ever get to a point, and maybe soon or maybe it doesn't at all, where it sort of doesn't become cool anymore because, like, m- like it's like a Facebook where, like, my mom wants to go to her. Not, my mom's awesome, by the way, but, like, like, a, like, like just... <laughs> 
<laughs> you get what I'm saying, type of deal? Like, could it ever yeah. lose bro, that cool factor? Saying, dude, bro, absolutely, man. With anything in life, man, everything, every good thing comes to an end. There's, there's always a point where it just kind of like gets everything gets played out, and mm-hmm. that's to be expected. And I think one of the, the, it's kind of a bummer for me because I, I can kind of already sense that it's this is where that thing is going. Yeah. Um, you know, and, but whatever, like I, I'm accepting of it. Like it's whatever. And here's the thing, like it, in, I've never been to a festival before that, but I went to other festivals that I had a good time, but it was never like the same experience. And listen, there, there'll be something else after that. When that, when that's like said and done, there will be something else that kind of brings that to people. And, you know, maybe at that point I'm just kind of over that whole scene. Yeah. You know, like, cause that's just, that just is what happens. But, um, yeah i mean it's you have to you have to expect with anything bro like it's like the cliche like saying like every good thing comes to an every good thing comes to an end and whether it and it might not even be in the sense of like like for everybody it just might be for you like right now i'm in a place where like i still enjoy it like i would i went this last weekend or this past this past one yeah and i was a little bit nervous like thinking that you know what i was nervous because i was already feeling like maybe this isn't like what i really like want to do anymore um but i went and i was you know and it kind of like in some weird way like reignited it a little bit i was like you know what i would do this again next year if the lineup is right you know so now i'm being maybe more selective about it like if there was music that i really wanted to see if there was a band or a musician that i was like i really want to see this person i would go um if not then i maybe i wouldn't go i'd probably go to the events around because the events as well like surrounding the event are fucking dope to be honest with you um but yeah i mean listen like i said uh if you could if anybody could experience something like that if they can appreciate music or whatever it is if they give it a shot i think they'll like it'll open up some like some other doors to them and and that's the thing and like now i like go to you know whenever somebody's playing an artist i like is playing in new york like i buy tickets for it because i like i want to go see that person and like you yeah. Know, no, I think that, I think that's that dope. Up that whole world to me. I didn't have that before. Yeah, you know? I um, I I never really went to concerts before at all. But I went to one concert with my sister, Billy Joel. Like played at Shea Stadium. I got like a free ticket with her, and yeah, like just seeing live music there. It was outside. It was like like it was like a gorgeous night. Like Paul McCartney came out at the end, and like that yeah. that that's like the mecca. You know, like it's like that was like the yeah. ultimate. But like that opened my world to like going to like you said a sh- like a, just an outdoor little concert where like nobody's really at and just hearing live music and nice weather like you can't beat that so i can't even imagine what like a Coachero is like on steroids bro we went to we you and i went to i came up to uh oh yeah that, i think it was like Corlin. yeah i went to oar and uh yeah we went to the oar concert which was cool like it was fun but even then i wasn't like we were just like kind of like whatever bro like i was just, more like, fascinated there, because like, your dad everybody else was was boys with like the tour manager or something like that. Like he knew the uh, band. So like I was OD hyped because like yeah. we were gonna meet them or something like that. But even like being there, we were just kinda like, all right, everybody's here, so let's be here. But then after that we were like, all right, let's go to the bars where everybody else is at. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like exactly. that's it. Um, you know, like I, yeah. I'll, so. I'll 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 wrap it up here just because I I, I want to talk again just like when I'm back at my house and like we both have good connections. Dude, I'm always I'm always down to talk. Uh, yeah, I mean as long as you're doing this, bro, I'm always I'm always down to be a guest on your show. But I I want to just um like I, you've sat up a little bit and I've seen your shirt and I've seen it on Instagram and stuff like that. But what the assembly? Yeah, what is the assembly and sort of just talk about that if if you want to just let people know what the hell is going on with that. Uh, so the assembly like I was saying before is like with the DJ thing. Um, a couple a couple of friends of mine, uh, namely An- Antonio Tone Troy, and then my my buddy Jeff uh, uh, Hefe. That's his like DJ name. Mm-hmm. We um on top of that, and my buddy Cody, but he's in, he's in Tokyo now, so he's not really involved anymore. But Anyway, the, the three we kind of started this party, uh, which is like I said before, like we literally like reach out to venues, like Tone, like reach out to this place, and like and we had an opportunity to, like to build a party, and it kind of developed into this whole like thing that like and he put we like put a brand on it, so it became a like a, a like a party for amongst friends that developed into like this group of like oh we had a little bit of a following, let's do this. 
and uh and tone was like yo we should do the assembly like that'd be that's a cool name for a party and and uh so we kind of went with it and it like developed so like now we do like people ask like when's the next assembly party that's dope. which is cool and then we, made, we made like we made these shirts like two years ago now these are like old but we want to make new swag because we made it like once we made it for like i think like six of us like it was like very like because it was we didn't have we didn't have like money to throw down to make like bulk mass shirts yeah um but now every time i wear this people are like yo when are we gonna get one when do we get one yeah i want a shirt so yeah, yeah, bro, I got you. So actually, we should. I would love to know like where your thoughts are because this is a long sleeve like white tee. Yeah, but where'd your um, light go? I, it got a little darker. Hold on a second. Uh, this, the uh, the screensaver went on. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, there it is. Um, so we want to do uh, the next thing I want to do is like short sleeve like pocket tees. Mm -hmm. I might like be little like, pockets, and then. And then, uh, is it good? Yeah, yeah. Can you, can you see me? Uh, I can't. It's frozen, but you can hear. I can yeah, hear yeah. You. It's still good. Yeah, I uh, think. Oh, there it is. Anyway, um, so I, that's what I want to do. And then the other thing is uh, tank tops for the summer. But either way, bro, if you like whatever we make, you can have one. I want, I've been wanting yeah, to no, do I'm just hats kidding. also too. I want to do like hats that. Are dope. Hats. I've never been a fan of tank tops, but I guess when you go to like like um, outside DJ, bro, you work music out. Events, I don't, I don't even be in there like flexing, like GTL, like, bro. You're Mr. CrossFit, dude. Like, come on, man. I know you're like, please. No, you don't want to flex on everybody. I I think I think the logo is dope. When I first saw it, I thought it was awesome because like when I think assembly, it brings me back Super to like simple. yeah, yeah, and it brings me back to like middle school when you would have like a class assembly and it would just be like like the dopest <laughs> time, you know? Like everybody gets together. <laughs> And whether it was like a good thing or bad thing that they were talking about, like just seeing your boy in the next row or something like that, you know, like the assembly yeah. just works. And I haven't seen other companies with that name or anything like I, I think it's a it's a good start to something. So like if you did it's have cool. swag or anything and people wanted to get it, they could definitely whatever find you or whatnot. Yeah, I mean, this it's always a fun thing. It's like, yeah, like, listen, everybody assemble like we always like make our party like everybody assemble tonight and like get on the dance floor like whatever it's like it's a good tagline it's it's you know tone came up with it mm -hmm. and uh yeah it's 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 always a good thing and like it's cool to, like i said when people be like yo when's the next assembly party you yeah know? yeah yeah um so but yeah bro we got to get you to one and we also got to get you uh with with wearing some swag i definitely so want the swag time. i know every time i hit you up i'm like like let's chill but like i feel like i phone i mean like i got my daughter now <laughs> always like you're like dude like next thing next thing tomorrow you're gonna be in like nebraska or some shit i don't no, but like know, i just bro. have like a i mean like i love going to those shows and everything but like i'm like it's not, it's it's not my vibe point. you know like i'd rather just sit at a bar and do what we're doing now and just like catch up with you and like you know talk about whatever's going on like not to say anything's right or wrong like it's i'm envious of people that yeah. like you're in a club while and out you know no, I get that. I get that too. And like, yeah, I have like my, like, I love to, I love to like club out sometimes and listen to good music and dance, but listen, bro, like I get it. Like, I'm not like, I'll be down for that too. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like no, I, I know. want to shoot the shit and just like kick it and grab some beers. Like I'm down for that too. You know what I mean? Like I'm open for anything. And that's what like, yeah, I'm always just like down. So yeah. No, this was dope. Anything else you want to touch upon? Like that, that you feel that you, you know, want to say or whatever? That's fun. Bro, <laughs> what happened? I know every I know everybody knows about Nick's. Like I don't know. Like I know. Like I've seen pictures and stuff, bro. Like I know Nick's. Is, uh, yeah, yeah, man. This is that's dude. Like I know I've texted you. I've talked to you. Like congratulations, bro. But that's 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 really cool, bro. I haven't. I have not seen you. See, like even a uh, dude. But when last time I saw you, didn't have like Molly wasn't even pregnant. I think the last time I like before that. For so real? damn, it's been a minute. Since you've seen it. So I think yeah, dude. Like. I think before, um, yeah, bro. I think the last time I saw you, like Molly wasn't even pregnant, uh, so it's been a minute, bro. I know that's but my bad. It's it's crazy to see. Like, I think we're cutting out. I don't no, know what you said, I just I said that's my bad. I got to make a more conscious effort of like when I'm back in New York to like. Dude, no, it's, it's not your bad at all, bro. Like, listen, like life happens, but you know what's cool is that like. We have that, like, we have that friendship with each other. Like, you could hit me up, and like, yo, you want to do a podcast, whatever. Like, listen, you're always on the go. You're doing your thing. I'm doing my thing. But the beauty is that, like, we don't, we're not losing that. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Like, 
whatever. Like, when we, if there's a moment that we can like like get together and grab a beer and like shoot and shoot the shit, like then we'll do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But even if we can't, even if it's another year from now, like. It's not like we we're gonna stop talking to each other. I think that's you know what, what I mean? makes it cool. Like the so most, like, like the best thing I always appreciate from someone is like I always hate it when uh, like I'll text someone after a while and they're like, like, or this is how it used to be even before I was dating Molly or a girl or whatever. Like it would be like, oh, yeah. look who it is, you know, or something corny, you know. But like the fact that I could text you after, I would after, never. Do that. That's what I'm saying. No, not you. I'm just saying the fact that I could text you after whoever, yeah, yeah, and yeah, you no, would just. Know what, Answer my question or whatnot, you know? Yeah. And it's time, bro. All right. You're, it's getting you're, choppy. You're like your family. You feel, and you know that too. Like you said, like going back to like my dad, bro, He's he always asks about it. He's like, you know, what's corn up to and stuff like that. And I was like, yo, Corey's in shot town bro, doing his thing. He's traveling, whatever. He's um, the OG. But yeah. So tell uh, tell, tell Molly I said what up. Uh, tell Nick I said hi. Absolutely. <laughs> And uh, yeah, man, I uh, appreciate you having me on, dude. Let's let's do this again. Absolutely, you had a good time. It was all right, dude. This is really cool, man. I've like I've never done this before, so this is really cool. All so right. I'm I'm always down to do this again. For sure. Cool. Love you, bro. Thank you. Right. I love you too, man. I'll catch you later. All right, peace, peace. kid.